Hello, folks. Welcome to a live That Christian panel on Deprogram with Carrie Smith. This is a new show that we're trying to do every couple of weeks where we bring together some of your favorite YouTubers and commentators who happen to be Christian. And maybe they don't talk about that on their channels. This is a place where you can stretch out and you can feel free to do that. We have some of our returning... Stretch out, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's stretch out. We have some returning panelists, but let's let's introduce our special guest first since he's special. in the right corner. Special guest, Drunk 3PO. How are Just you? Just call sir? me Jay. I'm good. Thank you. Thanks for uh first of all, thanks for recommending this film. I didn't even know it existed. <laughs> and uh thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Yeah, we Michelle, I have to give it to Michelle from Force of Light. How are you, Michelle? Good. Good to be here. Michelle, you keep recommending tear jerkers and like these sleepers that I haven't heard of. <laughs> the, the Christian movies seem to be tear jerkers is what I'm discovering. <laughs> yes. Uh, did the men cry? Did you guys cry? My husband didn't cry, but he laughed at me crying. Uh, no. Yeah. I the, the truth is, once I got into like, once the movie started rolling a little bit, I was like, I know this story from somewhere and I kind of Googled it on my phone like uh, halfway through and I was like, <laughs> I, I know this story. So I kind of like knew the ending. So it was pretty cool. It still was good. Like I still enjoyed it, but. But you but, yeah. recognize I it. didn't cry. <laughs> it, it, got my, it got my dad. It got my dad. Yeah. So that. <laughs> it probably. But, got then, but then again. But then again, he has a daughter, Michelle, so it was extra hard hitting, I would say. <laughs> yes, the the lead, uh, the little girl at the center of the film is named Michelle. That made it confusing when I was talking oh, they about were it. Excellent in this film. Yeah, they were excellent in this film. And Brahma oh. Bull is back. Hello, Brahma. How are you? Doing good. I unfortunately did not get a chance to see it. I had the parents in town for the last week, so. They were not interested in going to see any movie over the weekend, and that's about the only time I had a chance to. So I did read up on the story, so I can participate a little. Great. There you well, go. We're glad to have you. So why don't we start with first impressions? You said you loved it, Jay? I did. Uh, I, I, was, uh, I was with it throughout the whole film. So, you know, just to, just to see how they were going to, you know, spin this or take this, what direction... I thought the the children in the film did a great job and especially they like did. tugging at your heartstrings and all that stuff. So and I, I, I was shocked to see <laughs> I I call him Reacher because that's like the only <laughs> it's like the name that I call the uh, uh Alan, right? Is yeah, Alan. Like, yeah. yeah. Uh to see him in there playing uh the dad. So that was really that was really cool. But you know, for me personally, I think a lot of times like when I see Christian films like this it, it, the, what I what I leave, and are we are we talking spoilers or no? Yes, we're gonna okay. show the trailer in a second. And okay. Yeah, people know we'll spoil. Probably. For me, like when I uh, when when I leave a film like this, I it it always it always triggers my mind as to why, like why God <laughs> why God is doing that in this person's life mm -hmm. and not in somebody else. Like, why does this guy have to go through so much? crap you know yeah. uh his wife dying his kid's about to die he's broke can't find you know he's hard working seems like he's doing everything right and yet he just could he, he went years without catching a break you know and then you know this woman comes in and and uh pushes his buttons a little bit to push him <laughs> in a direction to uh but i mean it came down to like the last second you know yes it's like he couldn't catch a break to like even the last second <laughs> Okay, so. here's what I was thinking about that. Tell me what you guys think. I was after we left the theater last night. I was saying to my husband, "Do you think maybe?" So in the film, the 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 dad, the husband, he sort of seems to have lost his faith a little bit after his wife dies. Yes, and even yeah. his mom kind of talks about that and losing his faith a little. And maybe what if, if you've lost your faith, it can't be easy. 
like like the path for once they found the transplant for his daughter and you know every step of the way it's hard there's a snowstorm then the car won't you know he can't get down the path there's a tree in the path everything that could go wrong goes wrong and yet they still work it out the helicopter still comes there's so many moments where he thinks it's not going to work out and it still works out and i almost wonder if god has to make it that hard to sh to shake you awake to show you cuz you can't deny that like like if it had been easy maybe it wouldn't grow his faith back but since it was like so many things that had to work out right i think if i were in that case i'd be like this was a miracle this was like an oh, impossible yeah. of impossibles do you know what i mean oh ab absolutely and even in this movie uh, and, and I know I think you're about to play the trailer. And I will say for those of you, if, if you've not watched this movie, us talking about it isn't really going to spoil it. I mean, going into this movie, you knew they didn't make a movie about a little girl who dies at the end. <laughs> you know, that wouldn't be the best movie. Um, but but in this movie, like the first thing that struck me, Carrie, is that tornado goes through. And as soon as that happened, I was like, he's going to be able to get money. Like he's going to be able, like this horrible thing that's happened, mm -hmm. like it's going to be used to help begin to provide for this man. And it, and it does. And that's almost the first thing that happens. And, and you just kind of see throughout the story. I, I think you're right, Carrie, because, and I don't know if it, it was done that way or just happened in his life. Cause that's the thing. We, we live in a fallen world. Things just happen. It, you know, it rains on the just and the unjust, as Jesus says. Um, but, I mean, you can't deny. And I know some people would say, oh, well, that's not a miracle. No, I, I think like you can begin to count the miracles that keep happening throughout the story. Uh, my, my dad's a chiropractor. We've been in, um, we've been in the medical side of things my, my whole life. The fact that she's able to get $400,000 of medical bills erased to zero, that's a miracle. That's a flat miracle. <laughs> if you know anything about insurance, that is a total miracle. And just every point along the way, she needs a plane. She gets a plane. She needs a helicopter. She gets a helicopter. It's just you see God's hand like on this man's life and, and working for this little girl uh, just throughout this movie. And it truly is, I mean, it's precious and it's faith building to watch. It also, the fact that it's her, well, let's play the trailer real quick. I have something yeah. I want to say about her, but, uh, as somebody mentioned, once you've seen the trailer again for spoilers, you pretty, it's one of those trailers where you feel like you've seen the whole movie, but it's still worth going to see. Yes. I think for the, the emotion and the, the human, just the human emotion that we can all relate to in it. Okay. My name is Sharon, and I'm an alcoholic for this wooden headache. My advice, find a reason to be here that's bigger than you are. I read about this family in the paper. I think this is it. Yeah, we have a situation. And we're all pretty for mommy. Well, maybe just a little off the cheeks. God is here with us right now, and we are here with you. Something about that little girl without a mom, sick, and the family's blood dry from all the hospital bills. I think I'm supposed to help. Hi, Sharon. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to come by and give you bits. I just made dinner if you want to stay. Would love to. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? I met this woman. She's a mess. Perfect. She'll fit right in. Mm -hmm. 400000 plus in medical bills, all three credit cards maxed out. Mm -hmm. Your income's only 3600 a month. Yes, ma'am. That's not good, Ed. No, ma'am. I'm going to put together a press kit for a corporate donations, that kind of thing. Smile. Girls, help your daddy out. <laughs> I've owned four small businesses. I'm good at plenty of things. Taking no for an answer ain't one of them. Daddy's in over his head. You're asking us to reduce the family's medical bills due to hardship. No, I'm asking you to erase them. All of them. Was that funny? Daddy! Oh, you want to go on an adventure? Mm-hmm. <laughs>
Michelle will need to fly 700 miles to the Children's Hospital. Are you telling me we need a plane now? How exactly do you recommend we get a plane, Doc? I'll get you a plane, I promise. We are going to save this girl, you hear me? We're going to need a lot of shovels. This is our last chance. If we don't take it, Michelle dies. How did it become your responsibility to save her? Because I'm here? Because I can. So that's the movie. <laughs> what did you guys think about her character being in some ways the answer to this guy's prayers well, the unlikely just, answer can we just first say that hillary swank stills every scene she's in like <laughs> I, thought she, I thought she was fantastic in this movie uh i mean excellent job by hillary swank um but i mean to me it's it's, it's not surprising at all it's this woman that in her own right is looking for redemption in her life and just as as it gets on, needs something to focus her attention. And something else I want to say, this isn't necessarily a Christian thing. I I just really appreciate Hillary Swank's character in this movie uh, because there's so many in movies in general, there's so much talk about Mary Sue's, and there just really haven't been a lot of great female characters as of late. And I, I think Hillary Swank's character was an excellent character. I mean, I know she's based on a real person, but the, the character was excellent. And it's like, I've met that Southern woman. That Southern woman exists. That's not gonna, <laughs> that, that she's going to get stuff done. It's going to be done in a womanly way, but she's not going to be told no. And yeah, I just really, I thought it was a great character. Like she has things to overcome throughout the movie, but she just won't be told no and just keeps working for this family. And I've just rambled a lot on the actual character, but as far, as far as God using her in the, their life, nothing surprises me. Uh, God, you know, everything is at the Lord's disposal. I would so. point out that they did take a, a few, you know, artistic uh, liberties with it. <laughs> yeah. um, she was not an alcoholic. Oh. Her parents were both alcoholics. Her mother died of liver cancer from alcoholism, but she herself was not an alcoholic. She approved the change because she wanted to make sure that that kind of message was in there too. But mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's an important <laughs> note. Thank you. Yeah. Well, and I was going to say kind of what you were just saying, Michelle, I didn't get to see it, but the, you know, the preview itself reminds me very much of the blind side. Yes. As far as the character. Lives. Yeah. Jay, I, I think I, you were going to say something. Well, I think for me, like the, the beauty, the beautiful thing of this entire message um, other than the poor guy going through like one heartbreak after another, which just seems like he was really just beaten up in this film for almost no reason, <laughs> but yeah. it just, you know, that's life is that God, it, it the, 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 the message that I love that people, when, uh, let me see if I can get my words correct. The message that I really love seeing is when people realize that they don't have to be perfect to be used by God, that they don't mm -hmm. have to have, yeah their life together because I've seen that and heard that uh, excuse more than I'd like to, where it's just like, well, I got to get this together. And once I get this together, then I could do this and then I could serve and then I could help out or maybe I could do parts of this. Maybe I can do that. But uh, my life is such a mess right now. Like, why would why would God want to use me or why? How could I help someone else and things like that? So uh, to see a message of a person who is a huge mess herself, but she has a gifting to get things done. And, you know, she was able to, through her helping others, she was able to find her own redemption, um, which was, which is, it's a beautiful story, you know, she that a that a lot of people need to realize. Skills. So at least in the film, I, I, I don't know if it's how far they strayed from real life, but um, at least in the film and, and, you know, entertainments do tell great stories that motivate people and encourage people. So I hope, out of everything it um you know that message gets across that you don't have to be you don't have to have a perfect resume to be used you yes. know to change the life of somebody around you because uh the world is waiting you know what if she would have she could have easily said oh my god i drink too much uh this guy like who am I? I don't know his family 
You know, that scene where she goes into the funeral and she's dressed like, you know, she was at the bar all night. She smells like booze. And she just walks <laughs> in and she tries to lower her skirt a little bit before walking in, yeah. you know, and it's like uh, she had every reason to say, I can't. I got I got bills. Uh, my family's a p messed up. I don't talk to my son anymore. And what am I doing helping these people? Yes. But, so to me, that was that was a that was a very strong message to anyone out there that feels like they can't they can't be a part of something awesome in somebody else's life um, because they think their life is a little too messy. Mm -hmm. so. I totally agree. What? It made me think of the the verse about God um, chooses the foolish to shame the wise, to confound the wise, to confound the wise or yeah, or to, and chooses the weak to confound the strong. I and God can use any one and often the unlikeliest, you know? So I like the verse where in Acts, where the king was like, who are these uneducated people <laughs> turning the world upside down? You remember that verse? Yes. To me, that's the greatest thing ever. That, that should speak to everyone out there that they can't figure out who these disciples are. Who are these people that are changing everything that people are following, that this message is getting out? These are uneducated, filthy people. Who are they flipping our world upside down? They couldn't figure it out. The top scholars couldn't figure it out. The kings couldn't figure it out. But God had it all worked out. And, I, and, I, and to me, like, that's that's the beauty of, of who God is, at least in my life. So, you know. I love yes. that. Is that Acts 4? I was trying to look it up because I don't know that verse. Um, if Michelle doesn't know it by heart, we need to rethink her <laughs> credentials. That's, that's well, because say. it says that about them, and if he, the it is an axe, and it, it's I can tell you it's about the group in Ephesus that they turn the world yeah. upside down. It's eight men. Yeah, uh, but they call them uneducated. In some version, it was like, "Who are these uneducated men?" Yes, and that was a slap. You know, it's like, "Who are these? Mm -hmm. Who are these dumb people here?" Like, get back up in my place. So. I it's love really that cool. about her. I like that they, for the, you know, dramatized version, that the, the fact that they changed that, that you mentioned Brahma, they made her an alcoholic, which I guess she wasn't in real life. But it works for a movie version of the story because it really defines that, you know, this is an unlikely person. In fact, the dad has so much trouble accepting that she can help. Mm -hmm. Even when she shows up with money the first time, he's still sort of like, why are you inviting her for dinner? <laughs> like he's weirded out by her. And, uh, and I love that. I love, you know, she has flaws. She's, she's struggling with alcohol addiction. She even says at one point, I have no boundaries. I know that's a problem, <laughs> you know, have you ever met and, someone like that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that's a real woman. <laughs> they, violate, they violate the cone, you know, our invisible cones, our boundary cone. And someone just breaks that boundary cone. You just kind of like, Hey, hey. hey. <laughs> and sometimes you those are red flags for very good reasons because sometimes boundary breakers are not cool. She ended up being cool though. I did lean over to my husband at one point and I just said, I I just know you would have kicked this lady out of the house already. <laughs> like <laughs> even if she brought all that money, you would have been like, no. <laughs> but uh, but he doesn't. The dad, the dad with coaxing from his mom, you know, he he continues to resentfully, as he admits, he says, mm -hmm. I resent you helping me. But he continues to accept her help, uh, you know, with sort of a climax at one point where he doesn't, where he rejects part of the help. But uh, I don't know. I just, I, I love that, that it came through her. You, you really at the end, like needed his comment to her. What does he say? You're not a, you're not something, you're a miracle. What, whatever mm -hmm. comment he makes he really needed it at the end because he's not nice to her throughout most of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> you're kind of like, man, like she's really helping you out. Like cut her a break. <laughs> I have a, I wanted to bring up something. Well, let me read these super chats real quick. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us talking about this movie. If you haven't seen it yet, you can go see it. It's in theaters. I think it's a great, idea to support films like this because they're so yeah. unusual now i i was thinking that the whole way through this is kind of unusual to see this on the big screen um so it's in theaters now brett for two dollars thank you brett says i can't stay long but i love everyone on the panel <laughs> thank you brett thank you thanks yes thanks kb thank you for the five dollar super chat says the scene that really touched me deeply was between michelle and her older sister 
and giving the present before Christmas just in case. Yeah. And the what older was... sister would have known exactly what was going on because she had the exact same thing. She had to get a liver transplant as well. I they didn't, didn't even that. They didn't say yes, that in the story. Both daughters had the same genetic deficiency. So she had gotten hers, I think, two years before this happened. Wow. No, they didn't even touch on that. That actress, the older sister, she was in Joe Pickett. Have you guys seen Joe Pickett? No. And she's mm -hmm. just a great child actress, I think. She did both the kids. And, and of course, she you know could hit a little more emotion just because she's older. But uh, I thought they both did a great job. Because kid actors can be a hit or miss. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I will have to say, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, this is a super sticker from your your average patriot number for a dollar ninety nine. Thank you for the sticker, and from Retro Collective, thank you so much. Uh, I I can't see what these are. I apologize. On uh, uh, Retro Collectives is uh, red thumbs up. Thank you. I'm and, glad. Uh, average patriot nerd also red thumbs, thumbs up. up. And also, G -J -J. G -J -J. hello. Thank you so much. He's been a member for a year. Good dude. With a Very yellow thumbs up. Thank you, guys. So I had a comment from when I shared that we were doing this, talking about this movie. I had a comment from someone on my Facebook. And they said they liked the movie, but they felt that it was lacking in the faith department. And I didn't really agree but I was wondering what you thought about that, what they mean by that. I, I think what they're trying to say is like, it, it didn't necessarily pr like preach literally with their right. words, Christ. Um, and I mean, maybe, you know, I, I understand what she's saying. Uh, Cause I think this movie is very accessible to people who aren't necessarily Christian. Yes. And I think, I think that actually can be a good tactic because the themes and everything is still there. Um, but it is more accessible if the because I remember or I remember I just heard Chris I watched Chris Gore at Film Threat his review of it and he saw it out in L.A. and uh, I think it was like with other critics and he said there were tears throughout he said people applauded at the end I I think they gave just enough but not too much that it could kind of push people away either I I agree completely I think some people. You know, when they hear like faith based film or things like that, I think they're going and expecting, um, you know, the, someone to present the gospel probably somewhere, uh, you know, along the lines in the film. And it, I, I didn't, you know, I, I guess as a Christian myself, I didn't need to hear that. <laughs> so yeah. maybe that's why I didn't, uh, it didn't bother me at all. I, I personally think. You know, for all of us that are have been on YouTube and like just covering the stuff that's been going through our entertainment, the fact that there there's a film out there that I enjoyed from start to finish that didn't have a lot of the crap in there <laughs> that they mm -hmm. pump in is uh, very refreshing. So and it and it starred people that 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 we knew we that we know. You know, it's like it it had actors in it that we know. Um, there was a time when Christian films or faith-based films were like extremely cheesy and they yes. were almost embarrassing to watch. So yeah. we, <laughs> it's kind of like, we kind of pick on them all the time. The Kirk yeah, Cameron style yeah. films. I, I think Michelle should do a first time watching and we'll pull up some of these old 85, 90, 1990 <laughs> cheesy Christian films. <laughs> you probably won't get copyrights. Right? If we watch the whole thing, you know, I just kind of <laughs> laugh at like, some of the stuff, you know, because I, I'm sure I, I, I'm sure some of most of us here have lit. I don't know about Carrie, but we we lived through the uh, there was a whole phase, I think, in the late 90s where it was all about like the, the left rapture. Behind series. The, the, <laughs> uh, yeah, left yeah. behind and all that stuff was like the popular thing to talk about. So it's like, let's make movies on left behind and planes falling from the sky and all that stuff. So, you know. Like yeah, that, so. I I wasn't a Christian then, and I was very prejudiced against Christianity, and you know, in the woke world, and uh, I just scoffed at those movies. So I still have yet to see them. I should watch them sometime too, see what I think of them. They have the, they have a good now. heart, but kind of <laughs> they were doing their best, heavy handed. Oh. And I I will say in this movie, I think maybe what they're looking for, and I get what they're saying, is is like Jay said, maybe to actually 
like preach the gospels per se uh, verbally. Uh, but you do have multiple, I mean, you've got like a lot of imagery, you've got crosses in their house, you have, um, they go to a church multiple times. He goes back to a church. It is the church that comes together at the end to help them. And, mm -hmm. and that's where the helicopter comes. The pastor offers up the church. Uh, you also have him and his daughter pray together. Mm -hmm. uh, there are it, it is sprinkled in. It's just not heavy handed. But I, I actually think it made the film better in the situation. That's no, what I, I, I like that about it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree because honestly, I think all of us know someone or maybe we even did this, have gone through this ourselves where we something has happened and we just get aggravated with God and we're yeah. just like, all right. Uh, you know, that was a part of my life, church and all that stuff, but I got to take care of things on my, I, I got to do it for myself now. I gotta, I've got to go out there and just like, you know, I, I got to put that part behind me because of either tragedy or whatever it is that, that happened in, you know, certain people's are in, in their lives. And to see the full circle of, you know, him, like, you know, when his daughter was like, how come we're not going to church anymore? And he's like, you know what? we should start going again. So, and he, he ends up going back to church. Um, but yeah, I mean, who could blame him for being angry with God as the, the person that he loves, you know, died and left him with, with children yeah. and he's his job making $3,000 a month, like working on a roof probably, you know, that's not an easy job for anyone. Um, and you so see, you look at these people and these stories and it's like, yeah, of course they have a right to be angry with God. Look at the, look at them. Look what happened. So it's like, and seeing the story of them coming back, you know, it's a, uh, it's beautiful to see because everyone has their own story to tell, you know? Yeah. And it, it goes back to what Carrie was saying earlier. I mean, I, I think clearly that's why they did the story on them. How could you not have come back to God by the end of the story? Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> everything that happens, like if, if you ever wondered if there is a God, yes, there is a God. <laughs> Uh, because if not, that little girl would be dead. <laughs> like, like that is just, it is what it is in that regard. <laughs> That's why I was thinking about like when I've been through hard times, sort of a, why does this have to be so hard? But then on the other side of it, it strengthened my faith. Is my faith in prayer? I think I told you that Michelle, something I went yes. through. It, it wasn't until I told two of my Christian girlfriends about it. And then they started praying for me. And then it was like that overnight saw something change. And I thought, this is crazy. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. this is crazy. And I didn't realize how shallow my faith and prayer was before that. But maybe that's why it's so hard is like to get your attention. And I saw this uh, C.S. Lewis quote about uh, faith in God doesn't protect you from hard times or I'm going to mangle it, but basically it shields you through, it take carries you through hard times. So I was thinking, you know, that and the Bible verse about how God is close to the brokenhearted. And, and I'm like, I don't want to have to go through hard times, get closer to God. So during the good times, I wanted to, <laughs> I know this sounds like I'm trying to avoid pain. Part of me is I'm like, I just want to keep, you know, thinking about God and praying and not like letting it fall by the wayside. Cause I'm like, I don't, I don't want to have to go through the hard times. I mean, well, I know I, mean, I will, you can't uh, avoid it. You right. can't avoid it. I mean, I mean, going back to Romans five, where it talks about now that we have peace with God. Um, it's like the, the thing with Christians is suffering is just a part of the human condition. We will all go experience suffering on some level in our life and throughout our life. Uh, we will experience suffering in different seasons. Uh, so that's unavoidable. But what's good for Christians is Christians can approach suffering different than everyone else, where everyone else just tries to avoid it like the plague as much as they can. Uh, James tells us that we can go through trials with joy, to have joy, though you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect, complete, lacking nothing. Um, clearly, that scripture means a lot to me. But, um, <laughs> but basically as Christians, we can go through suffering knowing one, that God is with us. And secondly, that through it, we can come to know God on a level we never would have before. And in such a way to, to an extent that in some of these areas, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't take it back if we could. Be I, I mean, you think, you think of even Job, 
It's at the mm -hmm. end of all of his suffering that he comes face to face with God. Yeah. Like literally. Yeah. But like the book, of correct me if I'm wrong, though, they were writing these scriptures about suffering and stuff. Uh, Christians weren't really having the time of their life back in those no, days. No, right? they were being set on fire, thrown to the lions, uh, mocked. They were building small little camps that they had to live in together because nobody wanted them around. And it's like, hey, don't worry about your suffering. It's going to be OK. It's like, how do you preach that message? You know, and, and it's just it's incredible what they have gone through, you know. And then, you know, we go to our churches here in America, which I love. Don't get me wrong. Like the AC. Like, yeah. the AC. <laughs> pray for me. My AC has been out for three days. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Everybody lay hands on uh, Sister Sally. <laughs> yeah. Let's get that AC going. You know, anybody out of spare bedroom for Sally? You know, she can't take it. You know how it is. So it's like, um, but yeah, it's it's. It, it's true. It's like when you think about like uh, the the suffering of Christians and yes. how horrible it's been to, in other places, but still, it still can be applied in our in our lives today. So it just Any makes me wonder. Of... It's like that, that that part always. I always have a tough time with that, like always. So I was like, God, can we find you like sniffing flowers, man? Like <laughs> or looking at the clouds? Like what is this? Doing a downward dog on a beach. Exactly. You know, it's like, can I find you like going to the beach? What is that, man? I'm and, be and, thrown and, at lions. Come on, God. And we, and we can. It's just we yeah. can. It's just we can find him. Like this man. Let's go back to the story. I, you know, he. I'm sure he was taught that God was the provider throughout his life, but he really came to know by the end of this movie that God will provide. Like God provided for him each step of the yes. way. And it's just like when you go through those things, here's the thing. Oftentimes we have somewhat, somewhat of a heart knowledge and a lot of in, like, yes, we know in our mind God does this, but it's not till we have this lived experience going through it that we truly know that God is that to us. And then once we have that, it can never be taken away from us really again. Yeah, persecution and suffering can build faith. Definitely. And and ultimately, we all know that there is going to be relief for us as Christians because even at the very end, you're going to heaven. You're not you don't have to worry about nothingness. Well, and that's something too <laughs> since we're on suffering. That's a good point Jay brought up Acts. In Acts chapter 4, after Peter and John have been beaten and threatened by the Sanhedrin, that they are no longer to preach or teach in the name of Jesus anymore. They go back, it says they go back to their own company and they begin to pray. And in that prayer, they don't ask God to take the persecution away. They mm -hmm. ask that God would make them stronger and bolder to preach in the face of that persecution. So I, like back in 2017, I was in China. A lot of people don't know this, but mm -hmm. I... Uh, I don't talk about it too much. I think I talked to Michelle about it one time, but uh, I was I was bringing Bibles. I have these great photos like uh, it, it, to China and uh, I went to China seven times. And like the third time we were there, I think this was like 2016, 2017 in uh, a town, uh, the city of Xi'an. They, they had I get to I got the privilege of going to an underground church service mm -hmm. and uh, it was an abandoned apartment. <laughs> and they were all talking about how happy they were mm. because they lost their job because their family kicked them out of the house. And we're all I'm sitting here like, man, I hope they don't ask me. And <laughs> <laughs> I was like, they were like going around the room, like celebrating, you know, that they, they, you know, like the hardship that they were dealing with for Jesus. You know, because they're like, Jesus picked us to deal with this. This is such a a, a, a wonderful thing. And we know it's hard and we're going to support each other. And you're like, oh, my gosh, hold on on that. Like, how, how are you suffering over there in America, Jay? <laughs> I've got an ingrown toenail. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> yeah, I got to get a new I, mattress from my bed. And, uh, yeah. and I think in stuff like that, what Jay's saying and, or the apostles and the disciples and, and, and even people today. I think God just gives like such a grace and a, and a joy 
to people. I mean, again, the disciples, literally, they went and, and praised God that they had been, been counted worthy to suffer for his name. I, I think there can just be kind of be a praise that, that God gives, a joy that God gives those people in that situation. It's something special. There's a, it made me think of Hebrews 12. So I looked it up because I'm, I'm not great at recalling it, but this part of Hebrews 12, where he says, endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as his children for what children are not disciplined by their father. If you are not disciplined and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are not legitimate, not true sons and daughters at all. And, and then it goes on, it's talking about how God disciplines right above that. The Lord disciplines the one he loves. He chastens everyone he accepts as a son. And you just made me think of that enduring. I mean, learning how to endure hardships and 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 rejoice as a you know, as being loved and disciplined and made stronger is something I'm working on. Well, um, and it really is like I think when people read that scripture, they think of like um being grounded or, you know, things like that. It really is more like Rocky getting trained. You yes. know, it's almost like that. That's what discipline means to be trained. Training. Oh, not training. Yeah. Not spanking. It's like, yeah. Training that kind of discipline. Yes, exactly. Training, training them. And it really is that that's through that. It's almost like, you know, Rocky can train by, by Mickey. Like, you, you know, you're, you're getting trained for the fight basically for, for life for whatever it is. Well, I will say this, like, so this gentleman's story of um, miracles in his own life, you know, has now been, you know, broadcast mm -hmm. on probably one of the biggest stages that we have here in America on the big screen. And here we are talking about it. Yeah. So, you know, I guess there was a plan all along to, uh, you know, to get get this out there for people to be encouraged. And, you know, even though they're going through something rough right now. Or, or, they, or they've been going through something for a few years, you know, God might send a, a, an alcoholic female to uh, <laughs> yeah. change, your, change your world, you know. Well, and, and Jay keeps giving me things to say I, off what he's saying. Uh, I think of what from what he just said, uh, Corinthians, where it says comfort those by by that which you've been comforted by. And it's like this man went through all this hardship. And now his story can bring comfort to people that are enduring hardship as well. He can comfort them by the comfort he was comforted by, uh, which really is what we are all to be healed helpers, so to speak. Uh, to You know, when we go through those things, don't just keep it to yourself. Our testimony is important. It's powerful. And use it because you don't know what, what you went through, what that could speak to someone else and build their faith up and give them hope in their life. 100%. I, want, I wanted to ask you about um, one thing that struck me from the, this movie, as I mentioned, I, I'm not used to seeing movies like this anymore on the <laughs> big screen. And it had a, it felt like it had universal truths or lessons that you can take yeah. from it that everybody, everybody can take something from this. Cause it's about the human condition as opposed to more modern movies, which are, um, if they're imparting so-called truths or or uh, lessons, they're more ideological. It's like they're trying to teach you what what to believe, uh, and it's sort of divisive around currently around you know identity and things. But this was more like universal. If you you could take lessons from this that apply to everyone, did you guys think there were universal truths embedded in it? Yes, or lessons for people. Without being preachy, I guess. I do. Um, well, one of the things, okay, for starters, if this was made by, if this was an indie film that was made by Hollywood, the girl would die at the end. And the story would actually be about how the, uh, how our medical system is messed up. Like that's the route they would have gone. It'd been very depressing and bleak. Um, but I, I would have to say, I don't know if this answers your question, but I think it does. So this movie didn't make me tear up until the very end. And then I couldn't help it. I just, you know, the tears started flowing and they weren't going to stop. Uh, and what made me tear up is the power of human beings coming together to help someone else. 
Uh, and, and I th feel like at the end of this movie, it was similar energy to me as like, it's a wonderful life where they all come together to help the, to help the main character. Um, I just feel like at the end of this movie, so much of Hollywood shows humanity at their most deprived place, their most broken place. This movie shows humanity operating at our highest level. Yes. Yeah. The whole right. town, the, even the news station is in on it, trying to help this little girl. And, and that is what's so powerful and beautiful about this story. Uh, just what human, and especially in the world we live in right now, just what humans can do uh, when we are doing it one, one unto the other, when we're helping our, when we're loving our neighbor as ourself and what power is in that. And I think the word you were looking for is inspirational. We yeah. used to have movies that were inspirational and that's um, what, Ashley, the older sister, said about this movie is basically that she wanted it to be a source of inspiration for others and a source of faith for others. And I don't know if you guys know, Michelle actually died in 2021 at the age of 31, but they weren't expected to live past like age 12, 13 at best. So it really was a miracle. And so they started filming the movie like right as she died. I mean, she knew of the movie. Uh, so the family, I mean, they just wanted to make sure everybody knew the important. Or they were happy that her story was going to be known. And hopefully it would be um, something that brought attention to organ donation and faith and inspiration for people. I'd say yes. It, it, I didn't know that. Thank you again. Bramable coming in. I with did the, what research I could research. since I didn't see it. <laughs> coming in with the fact. And Michelle, you're exactly right. You I didn't know how to articulate it. You did it wonderfully. It's like it was inspirational. It was, it did leave you, it was like highlighting the best of humanity. And I like dark movies and stuff as much as the next person, but I'm getting kind of tired of them. It's funny, it's yeah. funny you say if it were a Hollywood film, how it would go. Cause my husband, when we left, he said, I thought the alcoholic woman was gonna end up sleeping with the the dad with the and see then, people were thinking of relationship yeah. and all <laughs> and that then, stuff it's and hollywood right would, if that was a hollywood become, film yes and then he would become an alcoholic and then the daughter would die and like it was just like this horrible <laughs> negative like no it was a total opposite <laughs> so uh, speaking of that uh the dad now you guys know this guy from what did you say reacher i haven't seen reacher yet yeah, yeah. Reacher. But reacher's good it's fun. i thought what a joy to see a truly masculine character again, a protector, a provider. You know, this dad can handle a lot. <laughs> he had, clearly he's he's handling a lot. And I'm just that also a little bit unusual because right beforehand I saw the trailer for Dune and it had that Timothy um Chalamet, Chalamet guy. He's kind of like, you know, a little spindly. <laughs> and uh, you know it's like a little <laughs> effeminate and i just kind of i liked seeing this real like Arr! like a man's man up there you know so well uh, I, I thought that was a good thing too again i already addressed hillary swank and how i thought her character was an excellent female character in today's world but i mean you also i feel like they hit it on both fronts because i think you also have the the very ma traditionally masculine uh, who, who's a loving father who's trying so hard for his daughter. I mean, my gosh, at the end of the movie, did you not just so feel it yeah. when he's like trying to kick the the thing? Because, I mean, yeah. he's trying so hard for this girl. Oh, man. And then that moment where he thinks like it's over. It's over. Yeah. Oh. He had to and make a the call. Hears, yeah, they call his name. So I, I thought I thought they did. I said all that to say I thought they did. It was a case where you actually had a, an actual strong female lead character, and then you also had this traditional masculine character that's this loving father that we don't really see a lot in Hollywood either. Yes. Now it's, the portrayal of the father was fantastic. Um, I'll do anything for my child. Yes. You know, and I'm drowning in debt, and I'm working twenty hours a day, and still have time for my to take you know, my oldest daughter for a walk to see the stars, you know, yeah. like that, that, that moment was like that, that moment was really mm. good because a lot of times if they, there's been movies out where there's been like two sick kids and the sick child, of course, gets the majority of the attention and the other one feels left out because 
for you know because the other one is sick and uh yeah. but it, they, the movie did a great job in balancing both of the children and how much the dad loves both of them even when they went to visit the grave yes you know um to clean off the grave and things like that uh they they did a fantastic job and someone brought it up in the chat i think it was a super chat was yeah where it's she's like give me this gift again on christmas you know here you get you take the gift and you give it back to me when you recover so uh it was pretty good yeah good job that graveyard scene that you mentioned it probably one of my favorite scenes that very touching like i was crying during that scene because that just the way that daughter helped ease open the door for his faith again so yes. so innocently you know she's like well okay can we talk can we talk to god and he's sitting there and she says well say hello don't be rude yeah, yeah. <laughs> the innocence of a child it's perfect you know it, it was Aww. perfect i loved it yeah yeah i love that um Oh, I heard something for a second. Was that me? No. No, it was a car going by. Oh, okay. <laughs> I tried to mute. <laughs> uh, well, I, I don't have much else to say other than I love the film. I think it's very unique to see something like this in the theater. I hope people go watch it. Do you guys have some things that you wanted to close with or some important well, things about I, it? Or I agree with you. And, and this is the thing. Like, again, for all of us on YouTube that cover film you know we talk about these crazy uh like disney movies are like their budgets are like 200 million 300 million dollars now and they can't even make that money back anymore and all these crazy bloated budgets this movie i'm looking had a budget uh, if odin was here he would have the exact numbers so i have to fill in but uh had a budget about 12 million dollars so they they took 12 million dollars and made a film that could touch the hearts of everyone, inspire someone, make people feel good, you know, trigger our emotions. And you could feel good of like seeing this movie, right? Yeah. And not have to worry about, you know, oh, there's like 10 minutes of wokeness. Oh, there's, the, you know, they just randomly threw in a sex scene that didn't need to be that. You know how like a lot of the movies are like that. And yeah. it's yeah. like, okay, well, that person took off their clothes. Why? That didn't even have to be in the film. <laughs> you know, they just, it's just random, right? Look at it, you, Oppenheimer. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> that was the exact movie that I thought of probable. <laughs> so it it's it's like it's it's awesome to see that you know ten million dollars, twelve million dollars can put something amazing where you could take your family and then have an awesome discussion as you walk out, you know, about whatever that you saw and uh you know and feel good about not worrying about being like bombarded with politics or something in your face. So to me, that that the, those are that's all special, you know. That it can be done, Hollywood. It, it can, can be done. Be. And so technically, you could, would you call this a Hollywood film? Because it's Lionsgate. I it, mean, if I saw it in the movie theater, I'm calling it a Hollywood film. <laughs> so I mean, Hillary Swank was in one of my all-time favorite films that probably no one has ever seen. What is it? Uh, way back in 2000, 2005, called The Core where uh I've never seen it. people transport it's the biggest cheesy film but i loved it like people like something happened to the earth's core and they had to build a machine to go all the way into the middle of the inside the earth's oh, core to yeah. save it so it rotates again so it was around the same time that like deep impact was out and yeah, all that stuff yeah like the earth's destruction <laughs> yeah so it was i thought i thought of it I, I caught it on tnt one day and i was like what the heck is this film so but it kept me entertained so and she also was the next karate kid, I believe. Hillary yeah, Swank was, was yep. the karate kid. So um and she yes. got her Academy Award for Million Dollar Baby, that Clint Eastwood movie. I, I didn't like that, that film. I haven't seen it. I didn't like that film. How I was Nancy like, Travis in this? She died at the end. Oh, spoilers, but that movie came I, out I already a long time ago. <laughs> yeah I, I like happy films. Like I like happy, mm -hmm. entertain me. I'm not I'm not into like sad, freaked out movies not much of a horror person so yeah i just want to i, I want to walk out feeling happy when I leave. like and that's what i'd say because i know carrie i know sometimes people watch that aren't necessarily christian i think if you just want an inspirational movie that is going to leave you like your heart warmed and give you a sense of hope i think this movie covers that because we it kind of feels like we are back or not kind of we are back into a time where like hollywood there's so much like nihilistic 
movies. Yes. So dark and hopeless and void. Like, it's just not, you know, it can kind of begin to weigh on you. So I just thought that this movie, again, it shows humanity and my uh, really great r rising to the occasion and really just being the best we can as humans. And 100%. And I just thought this was a, it was a fantastic movie. It, it truly was. And, and this studio has now done American Underdog, that Kurt Warner movie. It was good. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. Jesus Revolution was one of my favorites of last year. That was year. great. You recommended that. Yeah. It was great. Same studio. And then now this. And I know they have a new movie coming out around Mother's Day um, called, uh, what is it? Uh, Talking about Cabrino. Hero. You guys like Jesus oh, okay. Revolution? I love Jesus. I Revolution. did. Did you think it was cheesy? No, no, no. I, that was, uh, I had the honor of when I got back to like understanding Christian Christianity in my own personal life, I, I kind of left the Baptist church, <laughs> not like, you know, with pitchforks and like <laughs> stuff like that, but it was just kind of like, uh, and, and I went to a Chuck Smith church, a Calvary church. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I, I fell in love with the way that they, taught the bible they they basically teach the bible like they just page one and they just go through the bible like like it's not topical messages like it's just like verse by verse by verse so i needed that in my life so that that i, I love the i never heard his like uh origin story i guess chuck smith the calvary movement story so that was that was fun to see it was a great movie too. So, I like so anyways, it. I, I've I've really enjoyed all three movies the studio's done, and I just hope that's why I wanted to do it. And I did my review. I want us people to support these type movies because I want to keep seeing them. And I think, of course, obviously, the more money they make, the more they can put into them. And it's just I don't know. I, I've been really happy with it because I was I was like you guys. I couldn't stand the Christian movies we used to get. Uh, but I have really appreciated this kingdom story group company that made these movies, ordinary angels and, and the other ones as well. And then angel studios too. They, they've also been doing some great work. Do you know, do you guys know anybody from this studio? I I've talked to, and that's where I think we, I can get us all a screener for unsung hero. Um, I talked to one of the, the, like, uh, I don't know if he's a marketing guy, but, but I, we inbox each other. Oh, Ooh. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's about movie. I know. <laughs> I, uh, I, to your point about how it's better than, you know, some, some of the maybe nineties Christian films or, or what have you. I think the fact that it didn't, you know, that comment I got about how it wasn't, uh, I don't know, it, it, it failed in the fate department or whatever. I actually, I didn't agree because similar to what you guys said, I thought this is a great introduction. I thought it was a great movie for people who are not necessarily Christian. You don't have to be a Christian to watch this and enjoy it. It's an inspirational film for all humans. And like you said, showcases the best of humanity. And there's faith sprinkled in that might get you thinking about God. You know, you see his relationship with God, but it's not over the top and, and in your face. It's not preaching at you. Yes. And, and so I had a question here from a, a super chat. Oh. Can I actually say yeah. something on that really quick? Because that's a good thing, you know, get you thinking about God just sprinkled in. Because if you think about it, if you observed, uh, if you observe movies today, movies are made pretty much everyone is an atheist. God is never mentioned. Mm -hmm. They live in a world basically where there is no God. And that's what they try to present. And that's just not really, I mean, it's just not reality. <laughs> Um, so, so I just think it's nice to have movies that do actually put that thought back in people's heads because most people do actually believe, I mean, what, when I say believe, at least believe God exists. It's kind of like, it's, it's so at this point though, I think culture treats it as if most people are not, Yes, it's they weird. Do. And so like, even at the Oscars, what were we talking about the other night, Michelle, they only had only one actor thanked God in her acceptance speech. Um, and the reaction to that on Twitter was somewhat negative. Like, oh, I like her as an actress, but I can't believe she think good. Like, you know, like it was so uh, not like not natural or something. And and this movie kind of just shows that it can be a natural part of your life, mm -hmm. like without it having to be, you know, front and center all the time. It's just like that's just a part of your life. Um, 
I have a question here for you guys for the panel. Eldridge for five dollars. Thank you for the super chat. Is asking honest searching question. What do you think is the difference? How would you describe the difference between a miracle and a coincidence? Faith. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good way of saying it. Because I was going to say, as a Christian, I don't really believe in coincidence for the most part. I, I believe I believe that our steps are ordered by the Lord. And uh, so I don't really believe in coincidence. I believe that that my steps have been, that my steps are ordered. And when things happen that are co or a coincidence, uh, that the Lord ordained that. So I have a little different perspective, I guess, in my own person. I think uh, the term miracle is uh, whatever you deem in your own personal life is a miracle. Um, yeah. Some people could be an instant healing. Some people could see the job that they always wanted or the home that they wanted or, you know, it's it, whatever a, a different. It, it could be however you think a miracle is. As far as coincidence goes, uh, I don't think like. Yeah, I, I agree with Michelle. Like, I don't. I just don't think random things happen. I think it's. I think a lot of it is by design in a way. But I also feel like if if you're a person here, okay. Let me let me rephrase this, and you guys feel free to correct me. I I do feel at times that people with faith become lazy because they feel that God's in control. I don't yes. know if that makes sense. It does. Where I feel like if you put in the hard work at what you're trying to accomplish and it happens and you're like, that's a coincidence. Well, it's a it's a byproduct of your hard work and what you're putting in. But I do believe that God covers everything as well. And he puts you on that path to work or he puts something in front of you that you can accomplish. But you can't just sit down in your chair and just say, well, God is God and, and I believe in him and it, he'll make it so. Does yeah. that does that make sense? And absolutely. so I, I, I absolutely I think a lot of times people uh, of faith, they get very lazy and not want to progress themselves in their own personal life as far as creativity or trying to reach for a better job or do something different because they're just like, well, God, God will send a miracle and everything will be OK. You know, it's like. Yeah, I don't feel good. Well, maybe you should change your eating habits. Yeah. You know, maybe walk around the neighborhood once or twice. You know, no, 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 no. A miracle's got my name on it. You know, it's like, it's, and, yeah. and the miracle, though, is maybe the conversation you have with your friend, right? Who said, Hey, you should consider losing weight. Have you tried this new program? Mm -hmm. You know, like it's always, it makes me think of that meme about the person who, you know, I'm talking about the person who's drowning and, or they're on the roof during a flood. Oh yeah. The and, boat comes by yeah. and they're, they're like, no, God's going to save me. And then he dies. He's like, God, yeah. why didn't you save me? He's like, I sent a freaking boat, a helicopter. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, it's exactly. something to go along with what Jay said, something that I say often, if, if you listen to me talk about God, this is something I say in sermons. I just say it a lot. Nothing in the kingdom of God it is done without our willing participation. God has ordained it as such that we humans are here. He put us here to govern. I mean, look, go back to Genesis. We are put here to govern this world. That That is our role. Uh, God... But basically, nothing in the kingdom of God is going to, God doesn't just do it. Like he's ordained us to do it. <laughs> like God is going to help us accomplish it. And yes, there are some things that are just divine. That's a miracle. God just did it. But that's usually happened because of prayer and people, you know, there's still a human side of it. And, and that doesn't mean God's not sovereign. Yes, God's sovereign. But God has in his sovereignty... <laughs> Uh, requires, I think that's what Jay's trying to get. We have a part to play. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. We have agency as well. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, and look at this movie. I mean, God did, nobody sat on their bums and, you know, God just magically healed this little girl's liver. There there was so much effort involved in the, the woman who was helping and on the dad's part and the whole community's part. It was everyone coming together to work towards that goal. And I think when I call it, when I say like, if I had been in that guy's situation, I couldn't have denied it was a miracle. It's almost because so many things along the way were those kind of hurdles where it's like, this is the thing that you, it doesn't look like you're going to be able to get past this thing. 
-hmm. And then they do. And yeah. then it's another thing. It's like, oh, it doesn't look like you're going to be able to get past this one. And then they do and they keep going. And that's kind of what I mean. It's, it's sort of like an impossibility. What are the chances that that many roadblocks mm -hmm. appeared and you got through it? As you were saying, Jay, you you know, a, a miracle be, can be something in your life. Like mm -hmm. I kind of view getting sober, meeting my husband, mm -hmm. both of those as miracles in my life because I never thought I'd be sober. I, I tried to quit drinking for like 10 years. And I've talked to other sober people who never thought, you know, who never thought they'd be able to. And it's like every roadblock, every, every thing was sort of set against that happening. And yet it happened. And, uh, you know, meeting my husband, what are the chances in your forties, you're going to meet someone who has similar values and, uh, you know, be able to find that kind of, you know, everybody, all the, all the, what are they called? The red pill guys on Twitter. They're all like, you're done. You yeah, might as well get a yeah, casket. Yeah, I tell it's over. It's over. It's over. I tell everybody, don't listen to these gurus and right? these holy crap that say that this is how your life should look. You know, uh, it's like I, 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 people know this that I, I was like, I was living in Haiti for three and a half years, and the fact that I just bumbled around that country without anything major <laughs> happening to me is a miracle in itself people that know me it's just kind of like i it's just jay you know like jay just kind of wanders around and like there you go so i i'll never forget like the one time uh our truck broke down because someone siphoned out all the gas to steal it to steal the gas so i had to walk to the gas station so i had these two giant gas containers and I'm walking to the gas station here in downtown Port-au-Prince. Like right now, there's people eating people in right. downtown Port-au-Prince. So I'm like, I'm downtown and like I'm filling up the gas. I fill them up and I make a left on this road on Jean-Jacques Delagine Boulevard. And I, I walk and all of a sudden all, there's all these people that just kind of walk with me. And I'm like, where are all these people? Where do all these Haitians come from? And my translator was like, oh, my God, man, this is a protest. Like, we got to get out of here because these people are going to get arrested. And I'm like, I'm carrying, like, gasoline. Lean. And they're like, and they're about to set things on fire. You got the evidence. In your and so head. I just, I'm, yeah, and I'm 6'4", white dude, you know. It's like I stand out big time. So I, like, kind of take a little, like, uh, side detour to get back to our truck. You know, and it's, like, things like that where I go back and tell these stories. I'm like. That to me, that's a miracle in my life mm -hmm. that nothing happened. You know, it's uh, it, it's crazy. So, but God's just, I think God laughs at us all the time. <laughs> I think he, uh, I think he's entertained at some of our silly decisions when we think we know better. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, and sometimes, you know, I, I, I think he hurts when we're going through, when we're going through stuff, mm -hmm. you know, and he, he, does put people in our life to cheer us on and, and to, you know, to, to help us get through that next, like climb that next mountain, you know, like, like in this film, like what this guy was dealing with, like, it was like one right after the next, you know, and it, and it's like, God knew he couldn't do this by himself. It yeah. just wasn't in his nature, yeah. you know? And he's like, I'm going to cheer this man on, man. I'm cheering this dude. I'm going to cheer this guy on. I'm going to send him help. He's going to get through it. And it and, you know, and I'll get the glory when it's all said and done. Yeah, so yes. uh, and and that that's the, that's what I think the beauty of this film is. And, yeah, there should be more if it's only like ten million dollars here. I am talking like ten million dollars is nothing. But, <laughs> but for compared million, to like <laughs> you take one budget from that horrible Marvel's film that was like two hundred million. You could make, make you know, 20. 20 of these films that people will walk out of the theater feeling better and it's actually scientifically proven, psychology proven, when people fill themselves, you know, the Bible even says, um, you know, think about the good things, the happy things, the, the you know, the pleasant things, the fluffy thing. I'm mean, paraphrasing, but you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, uh, don't fill yourself filled with like anger and fear and hate and all that stuff, which you can find on social media just by turning on Twitter or anything else. I, I'm almost like literally, like I go on Twitter every now and then, but now I'm mostly like, it's it's disgusting out there. You yeah, know, yeah. Twitter's either porn or someone dying. That's it. Like that's all I see. Are they abusing an animal or something? I'm like, what am I watching? Yeah. So it's just, uh, you know, if 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 humans, if the humans as like ourselves begin to fill ourselves with like um, 
awesome stories of, 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 and being motivated to help others. And, and we get motivated to do things that we normally wouldn't do. I think that's just the win all around. And I think God smiles down upon it. And then he begins to show himself who he is in that person's life, just like he did, um, Hillary Swank's character, you know, um, yeah. I think that yeah. that happens all the time. I, I think as humans, as, as Christians, we are, our whole nature is serving and serving others. And when you begin to walk in that purpose, whatever it may be, whether it's like teaching or, you know, whatever it is that you're, that you're supposed to serve others, that you start to see God in everything in, in people and, and, and all around you. And uh, he'll call you into who he is. But the problem is right now is we live in a time where we just serve ourselves and we just yes. trying to do everything to benefit us, but we don't care about benefiting others. Thank so, God. and yeah. when you're doing that, you're stepping outside of a purpose that you, that you were designed to have here. I am going on a rant, forgive me. And, and no. people aren't seeing who God is, you know, and now we're at this horrific stage where children are mutilating themselves because they think they're, you know, they don't know what they are, yeah. you know? So it's all about that was a long talk, but that. I'm just saying like <laughs> hey, all that, <laughs> Putting that all back together, it's like we need more. Like uh, I think we just need a lot more films of things like that. Of that that will encourage more, others. Yeah. More uplifting messages. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I agree. Last super ah. chat. Thank you, G Man, for five dollars. G Man. He says Ap Apocalypto was on TV at the gym last night, which was directed by Mel Gibson, who also directed Passion of the Christ. God works in mysterious ways. <laughs> I haven't seen Apocalypto. I don't know if there's a joke in there. Either. I'm missing it. <laughs> I would yeah, say no, Mel Gibson movies. Film. That's what I was gonna say. I would say it's pretty rough. <laughs> that's a rough film. Oh man. Yeah. Um, I mean, like, I think Mel Gibson went through a phase where he just wanted to like show how bad he could brutal. mutilate people, like, <laughs> you know, like, like how Jesus got beat up in the Passion. Like, it's just like it's just a film of him getting beaten up. Just you brutality. Know? Apocalypto was pretty much this. It was about like people doing <laughs> sacrifices at the altar. You know, that's pretty rough. You're kind of like, okay. Michelle, you're going to do that one for a watch with? I don't know if Natalie could take it. Natalie was, yeah. Natalie was about to die through Braveheart. So <laughs> I, <would say> that. <laughs> I had to remind her, I was like, Natalie, they're actors. They're all alive. It's okay. No one actually got hurt. They're fine. <laughs> I think I told you the. I saw that one in theaters in in high school. My high school boyfriend, um, we had to leave because he uh, almost fainted because of the the violence in that movie. Yeah, that he, one like, scene uh, is pretty dang yeah. brutal. <laughs> the throat or the I, ending? Somewhere. Yeah, the there's beginning. actually the most of the movie's brutal, and, and I love men yeah. are like, why have you girls never watched this? Because we're girls. <laughs> A lot of torture in there. Yeah. There A was. lot of girls saw that because of Mel Gibson back in that time. <laughs> I'm sure. Clyde Dashing, who has a dashing avatar for $5. Thank you for the super chat. So thanks for bringing good things to dwell on. And Elsa Barrett, uh, who's been a member for two months. Thank you. Thank you for hanging out with us tonight. That's uh, Elicit Barrett. Did I say it wrong? Maybe Elson? I have. I been saying it wrong this whole time. You call him Elicit? Yeah. That's a good pun, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys and, and for hanging out. Mary, do, you mind, yeah, do you mind if I say my last words? Please, I want to say, please, because when he was ahead. when he was talking, I just want to say this for whoever's listening: uh, if you are kind of in a suffering season of your life, uh, two things: one, don't suffer alone. That is the importance of the body of Christ, of having brothers and sisters in the Lord. Uh, don't, you know, don't just keep it to yourself. Uh, find people you can talk to and, and get through that. But then secondly, too, we don't suffer alone. Uh, knowing, I, I just hope everyone knows out there, if you are suffering again, that we literally serve a God in Christ who Hebrews tells us knows the... Um, Gosh, my brain just went blank because I'm on the spot here. Uh, my Lord, my brain, it does this to me. Okay. It's kind of alarming. Um, that he knows the, good Lord, where am I on this? I, I, you can keep going. Let me find my, I just totally killed I my I scripture. Hebrews, I which one? The race of faith? The, 
What are we looking um, at in Hebrews? He's been touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Oh, yeah. And that, that's right. what I want to get to. We serve a God who doesn't just have sympathy. He has empathy when we yeah. are suffering. Jesus knows what it feels. That's what it, he knows what it feels like to be discouraged, to be alone, to be forsaken, to to suffer. He knows. So I, I just want to encourage anyone out there that may be going through a suffering season. One, don't suffer. Don't suffer alone. But secondly, know that you know Jesus. You have literally a Savior who knows. He understands. He's felt what you are feeling. So be encouraged. <laughs> a suffering season. Yeah. I don't think I've ever heard that term. There are seasons, man. I know. <laughs> Sounds like an emo years. band name. Why can't it just be like an hour? Like <laughs> That'd be nice. <laughs> God, all I need is an hour, man. I'm good. <laughs> I'll be back at your floor. <laughs> I'll just take an hour. Your, to your first point there, Michelle, about like not suffering alone and 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 leaning on brothers and sisters in Christ. That's exactly like that's one of the lessons I learned during a suffering season. I told you about that. It's like if you guys don't believe, maybe you're a new Christian and you and, and you, it feels awkward. It felt awkward for me to ask people for prayer. If you get over that and you ask for it, and it might even feel awkward to have to, in person some Christian friends pray over you, but I I can't recommend you try that enough <laughs> like try it try it don't don't stay quiet try it don't stay quiet yeah <laughs> you're suffering for the season where's the t-shirt man come on what's see the something say something if you see something Alyssa uh, barrett am i saying that right you got to correct me you're in my chats too so Elicit Barrett, I'm going to call you that. I'd be completely wrong, and I've screwed his name up. I forget. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks for the super chat. Ten Canadian bucks says, "Hey, all, Michelle, I've been been watching a reaction videos. Have you seen Master and Commander? Lots of YouTubers reacting to it in the past few months, and would love to see you and Natalie react to it." Well, thank you for binge watching our reactions. I have not seen it, and I have actually what? noticed people watching that movie. Is it good? Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I've been saying it wrong. El Cid. All El right. Cid. I apologize. Please forgive me. I like illicit. It sounds like I, something uh, sneaky. People <laughs> don't know I have like, I run a history of pirates channel and we just talked about Matt. We just had a live stream about Master and Commander because it's one of the, probably one of the only films that is, that is very real, like very real. So mm -hmm. as far as like living on the, living on a boat like that uh out to sea for such a long time it's very good it's very good jay's usually wrong but he gets a pass says robert <laughs> wow <laughs> mr that's, lowry that's true. <laughs> master commander is a great film you would I, I I like that, seen that either there have been a lot of suggestions just two others from the chat um diggy says that the, we omega, code. the omega code i don't think i've seen that yeah but i haven't even i don't even think i've heard of it i've heard of it Never saw it. And Arnarwa says we should also watch I Can Only Imagine. I feel like people did like that one, actually. I didn't see it, but I think people had positive things to say about it. Well, Alyssa Barrett in the chat says he never corrects. You never correct me. You just let me say it. <laughs> <laughs> These people are amazing, man. I'll tell you what. You guys are amazing. El Cid. Now I got to say it right. Okay. Holy crap. Sorry. Well, thank you guys for hanging out with us tonight. If you like the show, uh, please consider hitting like, leaving a comment. It helps the algorithm. If you have sub uh, subjects you think we should cover, things that you want to see us talk about, feel free to leave that in a comment, uh, book suggestions, movie suggestions. And I want to thank you guys for being here tonight. Do you want to tell us what's next? what's next for you, Drunk 3PO? What's coming up for you? Uh, I'm going to be in Richmond, Virginia this weekend at the Richmond Galaxy Con with Gina Carano. As uh, we get, we're visiting like 10 cities this year. Wow. So that's why I'm not on YouTube as much this year. And because um, we're, we're doing other things. So, so that's, that's fun. So if you're there, come say hi. Cool. 
you're a busy bear. <laughs> yeah, also, like, if you want to see those adventures, like, I appreciate that channel shout out, but on I have a vlog channel called Jay Walking the Planet. And that's where, like, me and Gina's road trip is on there. Like, we drove, like, halfway across the like, country. Is like, I just uploaded that video. Um, I have, like, videos from all the cons um, where they had protesters out for Gina. That was fun. I filmed all that stuff. So it's all on that other channel because I figured, like, we're just going to do a fun vlogging travel channel. So it's, uh, it's called Jaywalking the Planet. And if you really dig deep on that channel, my my travels to China and in Haiti and all that, they're all on that channel too. When I was like over there. So cool. A little different cool. than the drunk three PO stuff. So Robert put it in the chat. Oh, Great. thank you, Robert. Okay. Yeah, I think you I think you chat, I think you comment on those videos, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> in only in the only way Robert can. Don't ever change. <laughs> Thanks, Robert. What about you, Brahma Bull? You are also a very busy man. Oh, in about 45 minutes, I'll be on yelling at parked cars with Comics Division on his rumble. Uh, we got a few things to cover tonight, including uh, Ken Buck just deciding to leave Congress and uh, leaving Colorado and the Republican Party in a weird space right now. So, um, On my channel, we do party animals on Tuesday nights, and Saturday night is bourbon and boarding where we have a couple glasses of bourbon and talk about the week in hockey. Very nice. And there's a link there for the show you're going to be on next on Comics Channel. Yep. Thanks, Robert. Thank you. Lastly, Lady Michelle, what movies are you watching? Let's see. All right, I have up my review, which I think we might discuss on this channel. I don't know. I know Odin wants to. Uh, I put up my review for Angel Studios Cabrini. Uh, and then also I have our first time watching reaction of Casablanca is out. And then tomorrow our first time watching reaction of white chicks will be out. So you watch uh, <laughs> we had fun. <laughs> I've never seen it. Natalie had seen that one. It was me. <laughs> I'm going to watch that one. I really liked your long kiss. Good night one. Uh, I can't wait for white chicks. Thanks for doing that. White chicks. Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. And there, <laughs> there are the links. Okay. The only thing I will say is we had a, a new editor who did White Chicks. So him and I are working through some things. <laughs> <laughs> it's still good. You, though. man. You got an editor? Like, what yeah. the heck? Must be nice. <laughs> I can't edit those. <laughs> That's very nice. Well, thank you guys again. We do these, like I said at the beginning, every two weeks. Everyone's welcome in the chat. You don't have to be a believer. Everyone's welcome to ask questions. There's no stupid question. Um, we appreciate you hanging out. If you haven't seen the movie, Ordinary Angels, go see it in the theaters. Support a film like this. See what you think about it. And you have to see it the old-fashioned way. You have to go in the theater and get some popcorn and stuff. So, you guys, thanks for being here. Have a good night. Later. See Bye. you.